welcome to Chris Cook for You too. Moving right along with the Christmas holidays, we're baking cookies. So these are just something that you can put out for your guests and for your family when they have a sweet tooth so that it does not interfere with everything else that you got going on in your kitchen. This is a delicious cookie. I think that if you try it, your family is truly going to enjoy it. Even though you see a lot of ingredients, it's not a complicated cookie to make. So let's get started with the ingredients that you're going to need. You're going to need all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, brown sugar, and this is the light brown sugar. You're going to need two sticks of softened butter. You're going to need two eggs. Back here is the vanilla extract. You're going to need salt, baking soda. Of course, you're going to need the chocolate chips and the walnuts, but I decided to make some of my cookies chocolate chips, walnuts, and pecans all mixed together. So that's why I laid it out this way. Now, either or nut that you want to use, the other one can be optional or you can leave it out. It's your choice. This is the way I want to make mine just to give a variety. So I'll have some chocolate chip, some walnuts and chocolate chip, some walnuts, pecans, and chocolate chips, and then some just pecans and walnuts. Okay. You're also going to need, even though I don't have it in this container, you're going to need two tablespoons of hot water because that's what you're going to dissolve your baking soda in, hot water, and then add it to your blended mixture. Go ahead and preset your oven to 350 degrees so we can get these cookies prepared. It's going to take maybe 10 to 12 minutes for the cookies to bake off, but you're gonna have a delicious treat that's gonna go on your repertoire for years and years to come. And I think that if you try this on the holiday, you'll find yourself baking it not only on the holiday, but every time you have a sweet tooth for a cookie. So I'm gonna go away, get everything prepared. For the sake of time, I've already gone ahead and put the ingredients out here. So I'll be right back. Okay, now I do have a baking sheet laying down here and I do have parchment paper on top of it. But this is the one that I buy. You don't necessarily have to do that because you they sell parchment paper on a roll. And that's just to prevent your uh, cookies from actually sticking and from actually scorching. So you can buy this or you can get the other one. Just want to show you that. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is to start to do this right now on screen. So, we're going to start with the butter. Then, I'm going to add the, the sugars, both the white and the brown, in order to cream it together. And then, we'll go to the next step. Now, this is an easy process. You're just going to cream it just like you would actually cream it if you were baking a cake. Now, I'm sorry that I have to talk over this mixer, and I know that it's rather loud, but this is the easier way to do it. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to add my white sugar to that. I'm going to continue to cream this because I want it to be well blended. Now, you can use your uh, tabletop mixer if that's what you choose to do. I didn't see the necessity in that because this process is real quick and I think that it's something that you can get done without pulling out the larger um, equipment, if that makes sense. Now next, now that I've had my white sugar blending with my butter, and that's two sticks of butter, I'm going to go ahead and add my brown sugar. The next step is to add my eggs one at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now keep in mind that I'm working solo. So I'm using both of my hands. The process is not easy. So we're going to put in one egg. And the same rule that applies to 
your cookies with the same rule that I use for my cake. Don't burst your egg directly over into your batter. Why is that? Because if you do and your egg is no good, you got to throw out all of that batter. If you burst it into a bowl and it's no good, all you wasted is the egg. So get in that habit of doing it, you know, following proper procedure when you're doing this and doing it into a bowl and then allowing it to go down into your back. My one egg is in and it's incorporated, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in my last egg. Now, you want to use hot water. The recipe calls for hot water in order to dissolve your baking soda. So this is what it's supposed to look like. So right here I'm going to stop. Okay. Now that's what your batter should look like. But the reason why I stop it is because I'm going to do a stir in right here. So what am I going to be stirring in? First, I'm going to take my baking soda. And as always, your ingredients will be listed at the bottom of the tutorial. If you do what I do, you're going to get the same result. This is one teaspoon of hot water. And this is my second teaspoon of hot water. So what I want to do right here is I want to stir that to dissolve it simple process nothing is hard about this cookie if you set up all of your ingredients you don't have to worry about anything now once you get that dissolved into your water you want to go ahead and you want to add your baking soda you want to add your salt and you want to add your vanilla extract so that's dissolved see so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to stir it in really your process with your uh mixer is is really over but what i'm going to do is i'll probably i had to lean over this some to sit this song I might go back and blend. Now you do want to stir in this part of it. Okay? So I'm going to get it all out. And I'm going to go ahead and add my salt. Stir that up. And it's at this point that I'm going to add my vanilla. Alrighty. Now that's all it is here. From, from, that's all it is to it. From here is a cake walk. Or a cookie walk. So what you're going to do from here. Is you're going to add your flour. Now that flour is going to become too heavy. For you to use. A little blender like this one or a mixer like that so what you can do you can either use your dough knead on your large mixer or you can do what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna use my hand okay but it's soft enough if you look at my batter it's soft enough for me to start to add my flour so the next stages are I'm gonna put in my flour then I'm going to fold in my chocolate chips, fold in my pecans, and fold in my walnuts, okay? That's all it is to it. Bake these cookies, I'll put them on the table, and they will be gone before you can finish baking them and getting them on the table. I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back and I'm my own camera person now, so it's going to be like a limited shot. But here I've separated the batter into three different containers. So in the first one, 
I have the chocolate chips because this is a chocolate chip cookie. So I have the chocolate chips with the pecans in this one. I have the chocolate chips with the walnuts in this one. And I have the chocolate chips with the walnuts and the pecans in this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ball them all up. And then I'm going to put them down on my baking sheet. My oven is already th set at 350 degrees. And I'm going to bake these for 10 to 12 minutes. Now remember, all you have to do is just get a little bit of a tent to the outside parameter of the cookie. You don't need it to be all solidly dark because for me that's burnt. So you just need a little bit of tent to the outside of the cookie. But I'll show you before I put it in and I'll explain to you exactly what I mean. Now back behind it, there's my baking sheet with my parchment paper on it ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and ball these. I can't show you how to ball it because like I told you, I'm my own camera person. But it's a basic just roll and ball. You roll and ball it and then you can just smash it out on top of whatever it is that you're going to bake it off on. So I'll go ahead and get that part of the process done and I'll be right back. Now I'm back and here's what my cookies look like. They're already on the baking sheet and all I did is just roll them. And I just took a precautionary measure because my kids like um, chocolate chips, my family do. So I just stuck a little extra chocolate chip in some of these cookies. That's not something that you have to do. I just did that strictly out of love for them and their desire to have more of a chocolatey flavor. So these, the first part that I put down was the pecans. So these have chocolate chip and pecans in them. So I'm going to bake them off 350 degrees. Oven is already hot for 10 to 12 minutes. Then I'll bring you back and I'll show you what they look like. And then I'll go to the next batch. So actually what I'm doing is giving variety. I'm giving variety of having the different types of nuts in the chocolate chip cookies. You don't have to do that. You can even do chocolate chip without nuts. This is my preference. So I just went ahead and did it. Okay, now the first batch of cookies is out of the oven. And this is what they look like. I did let them cool for about a couple of minutes. But I'm going to try to take up one. It don't really matter which, which one I take up. And I want to show you something. Look at the back of that cookie. Now this cookie is a chocolate chip cookie. So it's okay for it to be that dark. But it's not dark. It's not as dark as you don't want it burnt. Because you're going to lose flavor. You're going to taste burnt. It's just a whole lot of stuff that goes on. So if you're using brown sugar and you get that kind of a glow, that's fine. And I'm not directly up underneath a lot of light, whereas you can really actually see this. But you don't want it any darker than that. And when I told you to make certain that around the edges of the cookies that you see a little bit of brown. You can see this from where I sit I don't know if you can quite see it from where you are, but see, see how you got that slight brown tint? That's exactly what you want with your cookies, that slight brown tint. Okay, this one is a different style. And what I did was I flattened these cookies out. And the reason I flattened them, I'm still working on that one. <laughs> but the reason I flattened them is because this is my favorite. This is the walnut. Uh, chocolate chip chocolate chip walnut cookie and I wanted to be able to taste all of the walnuts this is the one I'll probably eat the more of so I wanted a bigger cookie so actually I just chose to go ahead and to flatten it out and as you can see I did add just a few more chocolate chips where I felt like it was actually missing chocolate chips so I won't get as many uh, cookies but I'll get the type cookie that I want. So if you want to go with trying to get a lot, then just go ahead and make it smaller. And those cookies are delicious. Okay, the next batch just came out. 
they are truly hot i can tell you that but look at how good they look these are the ones that i truly enjoy because it has the walnuts and the chocolate chips in it and they are you know a lot bigger than the first ones were but it doesn't matter because the batter is still the same the size doesn't really make a difference you can make them large medium or small it doesn't really matter this is a very good cookie uh i think that this one if you look right here on this one and i'm still my camera person see how it's slightly browned that's the way you actually want it but these cookies are hot and they haven't had long enough to sit see how it looks on the back but the reason why i flipped it so fast is because i was almost to drop it because it hasn't set long enough so i'm allow them to sit and then i'm gonna put them on a plate i have the rest of them in the um oven and for this i think i have about seven more in the oven that's how many i got out of the second batch and i got one batch uh left and that's going to be a mixture of all and i think i'm going to make them the same size as i made these but anyway i'll bring you back when i complete the project be right back okay i'm all finished with the cookies i got three different batches here this one of course is my favorite is with the walnuts this one is with the pecans and the walnuts and this one is with uh just the uh, pecans so I just wanted to show you how they came out. Chris is making chocolate chip cookies with walnuts and with pecans, both mixed and unmixed. I think that if you try this recipe, you're truly going to enjoy it. It took 11 minutes only for each batch to come out. And as you can see, I made different styles of it, but they're not shirking when it comes to the thickness of the cookie and how much of a bite full you're actually going to get just wanted to bring you something different from the holiday something that i think that you would truly enjoy you can put this on your goodie table you don't have to go to the store and spend a lot of money and they can truly have a treat that is truly enjoyable and as always thank you for watching chris cook for you too bye Please follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Chris Cook for YouTube. And don't forget to share this video. Bye.